Now, as we begin to transition into the talk about the vague and conflicting answers and information, I think it's important to kind of bridge that with the talk about his personality, because that, I think, plays a major role in how people perceive him. He does have a very aggressive and flagrant way of sort of talking and acting. It's not PC at all. He uses a lot of terminologies and concepts and energies that I think would be very easily and squarely put in the sort of red pill universe. Um, and I don't really like a lot of the energies and ideas brought when he does that. Some of them are just a little bit too much, if I'm going to be really honest. He also has a very meritocratic view uh, in that he believes that, you know, the only reason anyone's failing at anything is because they're not trying hard enough. I don't think that's a very nuanced way to look at things. I do think effort plays a major role in it. Yeah, sure, definitely. If you, The people who do succeed, who make it to great heights and great things and, you know, huge fitness successes, they had to try to get there. But there are people who are also trying and not seeing the results. They're trying just as hard and not seeing results. They're trying just as hard to, you know, achieve financial success and not seeing results. Trying just as hard to get out of their various situations that are negative and not seeing results. And I think it's a much more complicated web. It's much more nuanced conversations with a lot of moving pieces. And to sort of reduce it to you're not trying hard enough and that's why you suck. I don't think it's really a clear, honest look at the entirety of a problem on any scale. Um... So I don't like that particular aspect that he brings to the table. So I think that's also an area where a lot of people give him flack. And I think rightfully so. It, that's not, I think, it's not the answer. It just isn't most of the time. Though I do believe that more often than not, when it is the answer, it still is only a piece of the answer, really. So it's important for us to understand that the effort you put in matters, but the effort that you put in isn't everything there are other pieces to consider so i think that that can definitely cause problems and it doesn't make it easy for people to swallow some of the other vague answers we get when we start talking about when people address like are you natty or not have you ever taken steroids have you ever taken anabolics in any way shape or form so on so forth and we get sort of like vague sort of answers that are very um, brand appropriate if that makes sense and so that can get on people's nerves. They feel like, oh, well, you're trying to lie and cover something up. And that's why you're so myopic with your views on effort. And this is why you're responding this way is because you, I'm sure in your head somewhere, the effort of taking steroids, you know, is part of what gave you what you have. And you were try that's how you tried hard enough. You kind of cheated your way up. He does say, I've never cheated in any way, shape or form. We just happen to live in a life in a world where there are a lot of untrustworthy people, especially on the internet. So it's very easy not to trust somebody on the internet. And I don't blame someone for not trusting someone they see on the internet. Quite frankly, a healthy dose of skepticism is a necessary part of engaging with any internet content. Even mine, damn it. I put myself up to that too. If you feel skeptical about the things I'm saying, feel free to check me on them. And you know what? Like any good person who really claims to be about the science of things, if I'm presented with information that is, you know, really different than what I thought was the truth and it is valuable and it is worthwhile and it is actually legit, I will change my views. I have no problem with that. Um, but I digress. Uh, point is that kind of play, it gets on people's nerves. And um, then there's some sort of conflicting ideologies or what seems like conflicting ideologies when he talks about things like ancestral traditions. So like he says, um, he wants you to be like your ancestors. But then people say, well, which ancestors? And then he never really specifies which specific ancestors. In certain cases, you have to dig a little bit. I think he is referring to like ancestors from like millions of years ago, which I'm sure is also just the jump off point for most of those people to then argue, well, then why would these people have that valuable information for us? They're dead and they're dead for a reason. Um, and any other many other points about like life expectancy and stuff as i had going into this which quite frankly i mean yeah there's if somebody died at the age of 24 i'm not going to be looking to them for tips on longevity you know i'm not looking for them on tips on how to survive for a long time they didn't survive for a very long time frankly 
So that's not really a conversation I think we can have. I do think that that's an area, another area that people find grating and that causes a lot of friction between him and the, and the online community and creates a lot of, quite frankly, flame wars on the internet. So there's that. He's also on a number of occasions called on information that isn't really backed by any science. Like just kind of like we talked about in the tenant section here, there's a couple of those tenants that just aren't really backed by anything. And sometimes he'll call on random information that just is based on nothing. Pretty sure Lane Norton checked him recently. There's radioisotope labeling studies that show conclusively that when you eat an organ, the corresponding organ in your body, will receive the nourishment. The, most of the nourishment will go there. I was gonna ask, like, does it matter what animal you're eating the organ from? Is it like a, is it a cow? Is it, like, dare I say a fellow human? Like, do I need to eat human Can testicles for my test? I don't well, know, that's the, what I'm saying. These are fucking human femur bones. I'm See, sorry, okay. what? what? These are not human femur bones. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> oh, man, dude. Whoa, <laughs> man, dude. It, here, here's the thing. I believe <laughs> the stronger the animal, the, the, the more strength you're gonna derive. <sighs> All right, primals, there are no studies showing what he just said. If that was the case, because most of us are eating the muscle tissue of animals when we're having steaks and chicken or whatever it is, we would all be jacked as hell. But the point is to say something like that, when you have that big a following, as big a following as he does, it kind of comes off as irresponsible because it's misleading people into believing something that isn't necessarily true. So I get where there would be some resistance and some anger from various members of the fitness, nutrition, and health community. Now, before I get into the body composition talk, I wanted to talk about some of the positives because there's a, there's a number of things you can critique, but I also, while I was watching these videos, found a strange number of positives, which kind of caused me to have this very weird and surreal moment while I was doing research. Am, am I vibing with what the liver king is saying? What the fuck? It was, uh, it was weird. I, uh, I didn't expect it at all. So, it kind of blew me away, but when it comes down to it, there are some things to take away from this guy. I don't believe ever, there's very few people, if any, on this planet who have ever been the kind of person who you can learn nothing from. So in this particular case as well, I think that there is, there's stuff to be learned from this guy. There's valuable information here that I found while kind of reading through some of this stuff and there's positive. So I think it's worth touching on those. If we're going to talk about the negative, we should talk about the positive. I think it's only fair. So one of the things I found is that a lot of his interactions with people were like very positive. He had very positive interactions with a lot of people, even people critiquing him. I can't remember his name, Danny something. Danny Gonzalez, there it is. Danny Gonzalez, Danny Gonzalez, Danny Gonzalez did a video on him critiquing him and his interactions with him ended up being really positive. Like he was a really chill, cool dude about the whole thing and like wanted him to experience you know, his whole way of doing things on the house too. And I was just kind of blown away by the fact that he was so chill about it. Maybe it's because Danny's a big YouTuber. Highly likely there's a very real possibility, but nonetheless, he could have just been like, kick rocks, eat dicks. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't do any of that. He was very positive, very warm, very welcoming, very chill. And that's worth mentioning because it could have gone a very different way. And the number of influencers I've seen definitely go the other way. And that also extends to his interactions with people in his DMs, just generally speaking. He seems to be a very sort of chill, cool person when he's trying to talk to people in DMs, especially when it comes to like commercial purposes or business related purposes. And that's, that's just generally nice to see. I mean, it doesn't matter what reason he has that he's doing it. I think it's still a very good thing for him to be that way, to know that he is a mostly very relaxed, very cool, calm, collected, and nice individual. You know, it's, it's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice, right? Now, another thing that I saw that I didn't expect, given his sort of uh, almost red pill-like energy, was the fact that he seems to have a lot of respect and honor for the women in his life. He does not disparage them at all. He's not, he's not negative towards them. He's actually very positive about the 
impact that they've had on his life and the influence they have on him both had and have on him and so you actually get to see him you know pay due respect to his mother and you know liver queen which is his wife and the mother of his children and they're not just mentioned sort of in passing they're mentioned he mentions them and speaks about them with reverence and i i can't help but respect that how could you not respect a man who respects the women in his life uh, though i don't like the whole meritocratic you know you're not trying hard enough and that's why you fail concept you know even though it's pushed to an extreme i do think there's value in his ideas of personal accountability you know the notion that you have to take responsibility and try and put in the effort in order to see change and to see things happen because i do think that that is at the core of a lot of change and a lot of progress for people just not making the effort sometimes it's you know making one effort and then just giving up for some people some people's not making an effort at all but i do believe that personal accountability is a valuable concept to hold true and i think we should all kind of hold that tenant true to ourselves like the idea that we are responsible for what we get out of our lives and what we do with our lives i do think it's pushed to an extreme when he, he uses it in certain cases but i do think that there's value in it at its core so i do think that that's a positive overall i mean again sometimes applied weirdly and badly but generally speaking i i do agree with the idea as a weird sort of like addition to this the liver king concoction which he mentions in his eating a lot of times um when he does his like mukbangs or whatever i actually went looking for the recipe and given how this would be eaten like what it'd be eaten with and like where it would fall in the ingredients liver king concoction actually looks legit it looks like an actual legit usage in terms of dosage of creatine I, that's, a, that's a major thing i saw there which that really piqued my interest it was that creatine was used in an amount that actually made sense and i was taken aback by the fact that it wasn't just a concoction of strange nonsense it looked like there was some sort of strategy involving its usage in the body in terms of creatine usage which was the thing that really stood out in the ingredient list to me everything else was like various other ingredients that i was like okay yeah cool why why not i guess you could if you wanted to but the creatine one was the one that i was like okay here's where you have an opportunity to truly fuck this up and the dosage made sense it made a lot of sense for what i would consider to be the average individual who'd be taking in his content and making use of the liver king concoction I, I gotta give him props for that. In terms of its usage and optimizing its uptake into the body, and I, I was like, this is this makes perfect sense. This is gonna fall after a workout. It's gonna come in with carbs. It's gonna come in with protein, a, a more than a sufficient amount of protein, which is gonna balance everything back out again and create a, a situation where your skeletal muscle can absorb the creatine as much as humanly possible. This is this is good. This works. I gotta give him props for that. There are also some concepts that he drops uh, here and there in especially his like Q&As where he just sort of like talks to the camera. It's very vlog style. And there's some concepts there that are reasonable, measured, balanced, and I mean, dare I say it, quite smart. I was very, again, surprised to see them. Okay, I'm just gonna hope that y'all can't hear the siren. We're gonna keep going. One of the concepts that he talks about is this idea of child spacing, which is an ancestral practice that uh, certain tribes and cultures would take on where the woman would have a child and then wait about four years between that child and the next child, giving her body the physiological, physical, emotional, spiritual, mental time to fully replenish itself so that the next child had everything it needed in order to assure its survival and assure that it is given the most nutrients and the best it could possibly have i all i honestly thought this was a great concept a great idea and he seemed like genuinely enthralled by the idea he was it made him curious it, he lit up at the idea and like you could see his sort of like childlike interest in the idea of exploring cultures and finding this kind of information which was super endearing to see and the idea was it seems so legit i mean 
as some of you may or may not know, I'm a pre and postnatal corrective exercise specialist. And there's a lot of information we learn there that has to do with pregnancy and, and postpartum and like all the effects that the childbearing and child birthing process has on a woman and how difficult recovery can be. And so this idea just sort of naturally made sense to me. I, again, blown away. I don't know how I got to this point where I was vibing with what liver king was saying but i totally was and it completely astounds me i don't understand it but like i'm willing to accept the reality that is this truth it makes sense it's reasonable and i agree with it now the last piece worth mentioning here in terms of the positives is the fact that like every so often the cadence of his voice would shift and the bravado would just fall out and you would find that he was speaking with this sort of honesty and sincerity that made him just feel like a very normal person. And that just seems obvious to say when you consider this is a person. They're obviously a normal person in some way, shape, or form, but you don't see a lot of that, especially when you just see the clips that you see in various social media posts and when people are criticizing him. You only get to see that in certain instances and when you do see it, the person you see that is at the core of who Liver King is, when you see Brian Johnson just sort of doing his thing, he seems like a cool guy, really. He seems like a chill dude, the kind of dude you want to have a beer with. He doesn't seem like that same aggressive, over-the-top personality, because I, he probably isn't that aggressive, over-the-top personality all the time. He probably is sometimes. It's probably a lot like Stephen Colbert versus uh, now versus what he was when he was doing the Colbert Report. And it's a sort of extreme version of certain personality traits that's created a sort of character or caricature. And I actually think I really enjoyed watching those moments with him. It, it was the kind of person that, you know, I 100% could, like, understand. I may not 100% agree with him, but I understood him and I respected him for, you know, having these values and ideas. So that kind of relatable, grounded individual is hard to find issue with and that was a strange positive i didn't expect to find in any of these videos but now the part you were waiting for body composition so um like i said people look at the liver king and they see that body composition they think it's impossible to maintain year round and it just seems like he's never not in that condition so people say roids now the thing with that that i think makes sense to think about is when i went looking for information about him i wanted to find out what is his height and weight? Because I feel like that's an important piece of the conversation. I found something that said he was 5'4 and 150 pounds. And at first I was like, no chance in hell is he anywhere near that short. How the hell could he be that short? He does not look that short. Uh, but here's the thing. I One of the videos that he has up is him in New York talking to various New Yorkers. And there is a possibility he's close to 5'4 if not 5'4. That means being 150 pounds at 5'4 is a very reasonable, possible thing he could be. As a result, yeah, I could kind of see his build being that. It wouldn't be out of the question for him to be in that state given the way he eats and the way he trains. So here's the thing. Do I think that it is kind of crazy for someone to be in that particular state of leanness? constantly yes is it possible he's using lighting and angles and maybe some water tricks some dehydration tricks in order to look his best when he shoots yes is it possible that he just naturally has a very leaner a more lean body composition on the top half of his body where we see most because he's mostly shirtless that's mostly what we see yes also possible is it possible that he's on or has taken steroids? Sure, I guess, but here's the thing. I'm also not a doctor and most of you aren't doctors either. So the evaluation of that is very difficult. Honestly, I'd say my guess is I don't think he's actually on steroids. Nani? At least it's going to be a lot longer. I'm going to have to wait a lot longer before I make a decision on that end in terms of really saying yay or nay. Because at this point in time, he he hasn't really been on social media that long. And any of this footage could have been taken at any given point in time. I'm waiting to see a longer period of time where we can see something like, you know, Chris Bumstead, where we see a before, you know, off season and on season. We've had enough time to be able to catch him and get a photo of him when he's off season and be able to see, oh, he looks less defined. Well, that makes sense. 
But this guy hasn't really been around that long in terms of people paying attention and wanting to catch pictures of him in a less than glowing state. So all we have is the sort of polished, manicured, ideal version that he's given us via his social media platforms. So obviously it's going to look its best. I'm waiting to see if we get anything more. At this point in time, I'm putting out the very real possibility that he just isn't on juice and that he just has a naturally lower body fat than most people upper body. That being said, part of why I feel so confident in saying that or at least feel comfortable enough to say here is the fact that he's not really that big. He's not gigantic. He's pretty big for his size, but he's not big, big. So this is not an unreasonable thing to assume. You can be ripped and lean and not that big. And, you know, he's not going to make huge amounts of progress over the next, you know, however many years if he stays that lean because being that lean and building muscle is very difficult things to do, especially at what I assume is his level of uh, workout experience, which is probably in the advanced category. So, yeah, I mean, it's obvious that he puts in hard work. He definitely works. You can see that in the videos. I mean, it's obvious to see that the guy is actually eating enough to facilitate that lean mass. You say what you want about the validity of cooked versus raw meats, but the point is he's intaking the nutrients, so he's got it going on on that end. So it's very possible. I, I'm not going to deny the possibility. That's kind of where I'm at. I think it's possible that he is not on juice. Now, I don't think that's the point of any of it really in the end. I think when you look at the tenants and you look at sort of his viewpoints and what he's trying to help people do, I think it actually makes more sense to shift the narrative away from that and think more about how does his various views and his various style contribute or take away from the world of health and fitness. And I do think that what he's bringing is helpful. So in the end, what I think is more important here is Liver King, for the most part, he's legit. I, at least I'm going to say it. I, I think he's legit. This is not me trying to pander or simp or anything like that. I just think that a lot of what he has to say, more positive than negative, is here. I, I think it just, a lot of it makes sense and works. It's the kind of stuff that will help people. I think if someone were to follow the tenets, they'd see results and... I think if they actually took the time to look through all of what he has to say and all of what he has to offer in terms of content, what they'd find would be net positive, which surprised me because I did not think that's the conclusion I was going to reach when I was starting this video. I promise you that much. Anyhow, that brings us to the very weird conclusion of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you found it entertaining. This one's going to be a long one. Uh, it took a long time to research too. So uh, hopefully you appreciate all that. Hopefully you guys uh, are willing to head down there and hit the like and hit the subscribe. And of course, throw a comment down. Tell me what you thought of the video. Tell me what you think of the Liver King. You know, did, did any of this give you some insight into various parts of them that you didn't know were there? Let me know in the comment section below. I want to hear from you guys. And of course, subscribe so you can be part of the galaxy and be notified of all of our future videos as they come out. And of course, stay shining because the galaxy can only be a bright and beautiful place if we all shine together. Peace. Surprise! I guess I yeah we're doing we're doing the other one we're doing another afterthought uh, or should I call these like afterburns? I don't know I don't have a name for these yet and I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep doing them. Uh, but you know comment section let me know what do you guys think? Should I keep doing these? Do you guys care? Are you even listening? Anyhow, um, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about this sort of conclusion that I came to at the end of this Liver King series slash video because I mean I've been ruminating on it just sort of percolating for the past. I'd say a week or so since I kind of finished recording and as I've been editing and really what kind of sticks in my head is like I just wanted to clarify some things things like you know I want it to be more a conversation about it's the possibilities it's about if is he is it possible that he's natural yes of course and like the fact remains that the vast majority of us aren't doctors and even those of us who are doctors we don't have the data to really make the call yes or no you know in a very like concrete sense without you know a shadow of a doubt but anyone who says that they can do that is well they're lying to you and they're being purposefully inflammatory for the sake of clicks and uh, baiting you into watching the content or agreeing with 
you know, whatever it is that they happen to be saying so you can align yourself with their content and, of course, subscribe. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to tell you guys exactly what I think, which is, I mean, yeah, it's possible that he's natural. I also acknowledge the possibility that he very much isn't. And, like, really, quite frankly, I'm skeptical about everything constantly. But uh, he's also, like I said, not a big dude. He's not tall and he's not gigantic. So he's just very lean and you know I, I don't think that's impossible to achieve i think it's it is conceivable it's just you know lower end of the scale of probability for the vast majority of individuals um but yeah um like i mentioned in the video i think this is less about that and it's more about you know does he bring something to the table that can help people and is what he's saying just baseless nonsense or is it grounded in something real something usable something um uh, workable something actually beneficial to the vast majority of people and in this particular case i think it really much for the most part like majority speaking it is it makes sense to some degree so i would say it's one of those things that you kind of have to look at from a holistic perspective not just individual pieces and either bash or accept so uh, anyways hope you guys enjoyed this one uh have yourself a good one and of course like subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next video